So first up, to talk about um, Kibera's water mafia. So we're talking about the water mafia in the, the slums of Nairobi in Kenya. And from the Thompson's Reuter Foundation, we're going to hear from Magdalena Miss, if I have that right. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Magda Mess, and I am a journalist with the Thomson Reuters Foundation in London. Um, thank you, Fred, for the introduction. And I, I, I do agree that uh, it is a role of the journalists to name and shame and also to bring uh, into light some issues that sometimes uh, we don't know about, even as journalists. Sometimes we don't know what's going on in uh, different places, and we often do rely on NGOs to tell us that there is an issue somewhere and based on those, the, the information that we receive, we can investigate and look into uh, issues that are happening around the world. I'll be talking about a story I did last year with my uh, colleague uh, and journalist, uh, Katie Miguero, uh, who is based in Nairobi. And uh, we did a story about Kibera water mafias. So how, how did we start. Uh, I was having a conversation with uh, Harry Bergkamp from the International Water Association. Some of you might know him. So we were having a conversation in our office in London and Harry mentioned that there are a lot of issues around water mafia in slums around the world, including uh, Kibera in Nairobi. And I thought that's an interesting thing. Whenever you hear mafia, it's like uh, there is something that uh, that's interesting. So uh, I spoke to him a little bit more about it. He told me what he knew, that uh, basically there is a mafia running water supply to people in, uh, in Kibera. And the people who are obviously, as you probably all know, uh, mostly affected by that are women. Because in developing countries, it's often women, most of the time is women who are responsible for supplying water to their families, and they often have to go long distances or queue and carry uh, uh, water containers back home. So uh, it looked like what's happening in Kibera was that uh, because of mafia, those women were suffering because not only they had to spend a lot of money on uh, up to a third of their income on water, but uh, because it seemed like nobody really cared or couldn't uh, provide water to Kibera, they had no other choice but to rely on the mafia. So what we did, I, I, I spoke to Katie in Nairobi, and uh, we decided to look into that story a little bit more. And how we did it, we, uh, I spoke to another NGO, which is Water and Sanitation for the Urban Poor, who is working in Nairobi. Uh, I did speak to her a little bit more about the issue. Uh, I spoke to you and Habitat, who used to work in, uh, in Kibera and knows the situation very well. And uh, Katie, what Katie did in Nairobi, because I'm based in London, so what she did in Nairobi is that she, uh, I think I should change the slide. Uh, so what she did, she went to the slum and spoke to women who are affected by that. And she also spoke to Nairobi Water to see what the situation is like from, uh, from their point of view. Um, so what we looked at is, where does the water really come from uh, in Kibera? And a lot of that water is coming from the water mafia. Uh, the water utility, uh, Nairobi Water, was saying that they have a lot of issues with illegal connections. The water is being stolen by the mafia and sold at uh, very high prices uh, back to the women. Uh, so I think one main thing from, from, from uh, this introduction is that when you are doing any kind of investigative story, you need to look and speak to as many people as you think are relevant to that story. So relying, relying on one source is not really enough. So especially when you're talking about uh, people affected and uh, you're may perhaps accusing a government or water utility or whoever, you need to speak to these people as well to get their side uh, of their story. And how, how to get it right? I mean, Corruption is often based on some sort of accusations where somebody is saying that somebody else is doing something and it's wrong. So, um, as I said, you need to get all sides of the story. So we spoke to Nairobi Water, we spoke to women in the slum, 
uh, we got comments from NGOs working in Islam who said that sometimes whenever they build a water kiosk to sell water for uh, lower prices, the water mafia, these people sometimes just come and destroy those kiosks because uh, they see NGOs as the competition. Uh, we did not speak to water mafia people because they obviously are very difficult to pinpoint and they don't want to talk. Um, so another, another uh, thing to look at is also to put it in broader perspective. Is it just Nairobi or is it happening uh, more broadly around the, around the world in other, uh, in other slums? Uh, the problems, access to data, sometimes you may find out that the utilities or, or Nairobi, uh, in that case Nairobi Water, may not want to read these information. We were lucky because they did. Uh, but I was, uh, two weeks ago, I was in uh, Zambia and I was talking to Lusaka Water for a story that will be published uh, next month. And there are some issues with data. You may find out that data is not released or you don't get in as much data as you want. Uh, and that, that is often an issue. Um, the language barrier, I mean, if you go to uh, places like I was in Zambia, you need a translator sometimes, and the, the problem with a translator is that sometimes you hear people telling a story in five minutes and the translator says, yeah, she said they have problems with that. So obviously you need to make sure that you have a translator that's, that's a good translator and doesn't just tell you his version of the story. Um, also, uh, one thing to remember that uh, we are trying to avoid very much is the jargon, and that's an issue I think uh, that can be very dangerous. I got an award once uh, when I started uh, uh, covering water. I got an award for the worst headline because I put wash in the headline, and nobody had, people just have no idea what wash is. Um, so, so be careful of jargon. People start li stop listening to you, stop reading, and they, uh, they just switch off. So um, I work for Thomson Reuters Foundation, which is a charitable arm of Thomson Reuters, and we cover underreported stories um, that mainstream media often don't cover. And we apply uh, journalism rules that uh, Reuters itself applies. So what does it mean for us? And I, I believe personally that uh, this is very important how um, journalism should uh, look like in a way uh, that I think those rules are very important and could be applied by anyone. So first thing is the freedom from bias. Uh, obviously you're telling a story from all points of view. You're not just saying somebody told me that there is corruption going on somewhere and you're just relying on one source. So you can't just put, show one side of the story, you have to show all sides of the story. Uh, another uh, rule that we have is don't put your own voice in a story. I think this is bad because that, that's more for a blog than an investigative story. Um, I said before, give all parties voice and let them comment. If, sometimes people don't want to comment, but if you ask them, give them enough time. If they don't want to comment, then we basically say uh, they refuse to comment. Uh, ask questions, try to find as many sources that you have. The so what is, what's really happening? Who are the people affected? What's the, why, why is it bad, the situation that you're describing? Uh, another another uh, of our rules is that uh, we do not give any gifts, we don't pay for stories, and we don't do any favors uh, to let us uh, remain independent. Uh, protect your sources if, um, that's a tricky one, because we need to uh, reveal all the names. We can't just say anonymous source. However, if somebody asks you where you have the information, the initial information that may be very sensitive, we do protect our sources. Uh, we don't do undercover journalism, so we don't go uh, quietly asking people things and then uh, publishing them, pretending that we are just passing by. Uh, that is, uh, that's the uh, first version. Get the names right, obviously, in the story. Make sure that you have all the names uh, right. Um, I think that's it for me. Thank you.
Uh, Magda, let me just ask you one question. Um, when you're identifying who the uh, kind of who the guilty people are, um, I don't know how much attention do you have to give to that. I mean, it occurs to me that in the story that you're telling that maybe the the real guilty people here are the are, are the, the, the 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 water company, the water authority mm -hmm. in Ket who were not supplying the water mm -hmm. to the slum, rather than the water mafia. Right. Um, so I, I, I wonder how you play when the, you know it's this, this quite quite complex environment. Uh, yes, I don't want to uh, give you too many details. You can read that story uh, <laughs> online. Uh, but basically, uh, in, in case of that story, uh, when we started talking to people, it turned out that the people from the slum were accusing the water utility of being corrupt and not having an interest in providing water for the slum. Uh, so we asked Nairobi Water about that, and mm. they said, well, if we find that somebody is corrupt, we, we deal with them, which you just, that's all you can do. You can ask them and get a comment. Uh, but what I also learned from, I think it was uh, Graham Alabaster from uh, UN Habitat who said that oftentimes, because uh, in case of uh, Kibera, it's built on government land, so people who own uh, those little houses that, that, that uh, the slum residents live in, uh, those little houses are often owned by people who he called are high in the Nairobi society, so they have no interest in dealing with the issue, they just like to keep it as it is. So, mm -hmm. so we were trying to look where the issue is. So one is the water mafia. Number two, nobody seems to have interest in, in, in dealing with that problem. Uh, number three, people were accusing Nairobi Water. Nairobi Water response was, well, we are trying to deal with that, but it's difficult. The, the, the mafia just mushrooms all the time. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you.